All right, welcome back to Flag of Socks, the podcast, episode 119. Today on the show, we may have found proof that World War III is about to pop off. You won't believe what it is. Then we have a new speaker of the house out of nowhere. We'll go over that. Then in Cringe of the Week, this woman claims that black people invented everything. So we'll get a much needed history lesson there. It's our turn to listen. And last but not least, L.A. crime hits a new low in this week's Urban Decay. All this and more, it's Fuckus Talks, a podcast, episode 119, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stocks the Podcast featuring Richard Grab Richard. Right, one for one on the intro, as always. This week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Undertack. Most guys spend about half their day sitting. And like most guys, you probably know what it's like to be irritated and uncomfortable and having to constantly adjust your boxers. But Undertack isn't your typical boxers. They're made with Modal, which is like cotton, but better. It's moisture wicking, antibacterial, and way softer. Undertack is durable, ultra light, fade and shrink resistant, and the best part, they are 25% less expensive and come with twice the satisfaction guarantee of the competition. If that's not enough for you, Undertack also donates a portion of their profits to organizations that fight human trafficking. Pick up a drawer full today. Go to Undertack.com and use code FLECUS20 for 20% off site-wide. That's Undertack.com. Under T-A-C dot com. Use code FLECUS20 for 20% off. They support the show. Everyone wears underwear. Why not pick up a high-quality America First product from one of our sponsors? Undertack.com is the website. Fleckus20 is the promo code. Thank you, guys. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Undertack for sponsoring. Are you wearing Undertack right now? No, but I should have been. Actually, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am, too. <laughs> uh, it really is the best. All yeah. right. We have a lot to get to. We have a very important housekeeping this week. I don't want to say how many pages, but it's a lot. Just tell us. Four. Okay, that's Four. that's in line. Four full pages with a bonus something page. All right, first things first, new speaker of the house, Mike Johnson. Yeah. So we're kind of hoping for the best here. It, it's a little weird to me how we were so invested in the speaker race, every round of voting, every new candidate, all these ideas of who it should be, Jim Jordan, Hakeem Jeffries, back and forth. And then it kind of just ends. Mike Johnson. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's done. We found a guy, Mike Johnson. Everyone likes him. We're good. It was done in 12 hours after like you heard his name for the first time. Yeah. And, and that's kind of part of the problem, right? Yeah. I, 535 people in Congress. Never heard of this guy before. I can't keep track of that many people. The human brain, I don't think, is even meant to know 535 people. Yeah. And it was so many like nuances to the debate and who's going to be and... Oh, it's Mike Johnson. We're all good. <laughs> Shove him in. Shove him in. It's like, isn't Mike Johnson Michelle Obama's real name? Yeah, Big Mike Johnson. <laughs> okay. I know. I wish it was them. All right. Well, he's our guy. Uh, I don't know much about him. Um, Seen a little bit of a mixed bag. He's based on some things. Yeah. He's had, you know, he's supported Trump and, you know, not certifying the election, a couple other things. So that was good. There is this meme when Dan Crenshaw tells you that Mike Johnson's going to be great. It says, finding out Dan Crenshaw endorsed Mike Johnson for speaker. It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> oh, good. Mike Pence is endorsing him, too. So, hey, we're hoping for the best. His first order of business as speaker. Uh, our, our nation's greatest ally in the Middle East is under attack. The first bill that I'm going to bring to this floor in just a little while will be in support of our de dear friend Israel. And we're overdue in getting great. that done. <laughs> Mike Johnson. Yeah, Mike Johnson. Off Great. to a hot start. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Great. We, we haven't had a speaker in three weeks. The southern border is being invaded. First things first, our buddies Israel need to get a lot of our More money. More money to 3,000 plus miles away. Yeah. So that's the speaker now. We'll keep a close eye on him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hope for the best. He's got to prove it. He's got to prove it a little bit. He's got to prove it. And well, at least, you know, we're not getting any of Joe Biden's little pet projects done. Yeah. In the meantime, you know? I hope so. And uh, hey, we're hoping for the best. Mike, show us something. Yeah. Uh, I saw this meme about the border. It said, uh, for Israel's border, all of our warships. Yeah, the best for... <laughs> warships in the game, the number ones. Yeah. And then for the U.S. border, 
We got a guy on a horse. Yeah, and it actually could have been even worse because, as you show watchers know, we've shown the Border Patrol people snipping the barbed wire. Yeah. They should have used that image. They should have consulted us because it's even worse than just some yeah. cool-looking white guy on horse. You should have wire cutters there for <laughs> when he lets everyone in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good. All right, well, things are continuing to escalate between Israel and Hamas in Gaza and also escalations with Iran. Mm -hmm. And based on some newly acquired data... I think we might be headed to World War III. And what is that data you're wondering? What's the show exclusive info we have? <laughs> the Pentagon's dominoes is busier than usual. This is not a drill. Pentagon's dominoes. People are there late. Oh, we need a bunch of pizzas. Everyone's working around the clock for the war. new war. <laughs> the new war, war we're about to do. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, that's kind of like a leading indicator or like a funny metric is if all the pizza places are delivering lots of pizzas to the Pentagon – that, I, I think, uh, Desert Storm, like when we invaded Iraq, it was like the most pizzas ever. Uh, so it's kind of become a yeah. leading indicator of war. Leading indicator of war. That's good. Um, Joe Biden's been scaring his handlers. This clip was from the other day, but this edit was pretty funny. All right, we got to wrap up, guys. We got to wrap it up. Is there any we're very blunt with the Israelis on the need to get humanitarian aid to Gaza, or what exactly? On everything. <laughs> so, we, we, no, I, I'm very blunt about the need to support getting humanitarian aid to Gaza. Get it to Gaza and do it quickly. All right. And, uh, May I ask you about the, there's a report in the Times of Israel that says Biden officials have indicated to Israel in recent days that if Hezbollah initiates a war against Israel, the U.S. military will join the IDF in fighting the terrorists. Not true. Not true. I've never said So they're scared. Yeah. They hate when Joe Biden's just fielding questions, and then the lady try to move everyone on. And he goes, "No, <laughs> yeah. I'm the president of the United States. I can do whatever I want, firing from the hip, you're, right?" You're some 28 year old assistant. Yeah, um, but that's the job because you're black. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of scary. Everyone's scared. The handlers are scared. Uh, but I think uh, at least our army is ready. Yeah, our army preparedness is at an all time high, right? Yeah, and uh, let's see what some of our troops are doing to prepare. Let's let this rip. Yeah. Yeah, this one. All right. To, uh, answer your this guy question, looks like he just went through a battle. All of this yeah. Covered. So I'm in the military, and Tricare basically has been upgraded and updating their policies over the last couple years to accommodate trans soldiers and the procedures that we need to become ourselves. It's been a long time, you know. I've had to wait a long time for this, but uh, eventually my time came around. I had to, it was a process, you know, I had to go through all the evaluation. All right, we get the point. It's yeah. facial feminization surgery paid for by the military mm. so that this man can, can become yeah. himself. Can feel like himself. I thought that person was maybe injured in training or in the war. Yeah, some sort of, like, detonation went off near him. And Yeah, no, not the case. Our military is paying for the trans surgeries. Yeah. Remember Don't Ask, Don't Tell? I, I love, hey. I look back fondly at Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Don't talk. Ask, Don't Tell, and it was so it was so anti-gay, and it's not fair. These I can't people, be myself. People just want to be themselves, and you know you know what they do, and they want it to be like all about them. Oh, it's about me. It's about me and my identity. Well, we've come a long way from that. Yeah, it's show them, show them, tell them, show, yell it. tell, yell. Post it on the Chinese TikTok app. Yeah. Make them accept and then criticize anyone who doesn't accept. They're Subsidize <laughs> as well. Subsidize. <laughs> Make them pay for it. Yeah. There was a tweet that came out um, about all the military people and said, can someone explain this phenomena? Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, Admiral Levine, a couple other fresh twinks who just moved up the ranks. They get promoted quickly when they become a twink. Um, and we coined a phrase for it. It's called – it's actually called – this is the new scientific term for the podcast – Late adult onset military induced twink mania. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the term. Rapway came up with it, but that is the scientific term. Did you know that 80% of the military identifies as transgender? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I believe it. Hey, face value. Look at this. <laughs> it says it right there military, trans, 80%. Uh, you heard it, folks. There it so, is. That's fact. I mean, I. 
I'm just reading the papers. <laughs> Um, all right, let's keep it going. Um, uh, we're definitely trending closer to 80 than we are to zero. So yeah. uh, no argument we're for We're closer me. to 80 than we've ever been. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not a fact. Exactly. That's a fact. Um, all right. So it does seem like they're going to put us into a multi-front war. It kind of feels like Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Israel in the Middle East. And I think that way... Wasn't there some, uh, like, India fired... There's some, some another front might be opening up soon. Yeah. I haven't I haven't looked into it that much. But. It's gonna be a multi front war, and it's that way the AI demon aliens can fully suck our louche. Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. like gonna be a good way for them to get all of our louche. Is we have all this like traumatic stuff happening all over the world. The AI demon aliens love that stuff. Yeah, the aliens might come out and try to stop, try to intervene. Yeah, that's probably what will happen. It'll be on the brink of nuclear disaster. What are we gonna do? The world's gonna end. Aliens. Yeah. No need for a new election. Just keep Joe Biden for a little bit. Easy. That's kind of what I think they're going to do. Um, I do want to shout out somebody. Okay. Uh, Charlie Kirk. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie Kirk has been really good about the Israel issue. He's being honest. He's asking the right question. He's not just doing the obvious, like, Israel's the best. Everyone else is a terrorist. He's, Party line. Yeah, he's doing uh, some good questions, uh, and he's keeping it 100, and he's not taking the standard gay Israel take. Yep. So that's good to see. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Thank you, Charlie. Very cool. All right, moving on. There was a mass shooting yesterday. Oh, I didn't even know we were going to cover this. Yeah, it's very sad to the people who died. Uh, Rest in peace to everybody involved. There there was some interesting stuff that happened the day of and the day before. Uh, The day of, Kamala Harris said, Congress must have the courage to act and renew the assault weapons ban, which kind of was Republican-controlled Congress? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kamala. That's weird. It's virtue signaling and for then, nothing. Yeah. The day before, it's, can you read that the line for the day before? Victory for veterans. The Senate voted 53 to 45 in support of veterans to protect their Second Amendment rights. The House passed a similar amendment back in July. This is a huge step forward on an issue we've been fighting since the Clinton administration. So it's weird. They're going for assault weapons bans. That's kind of coming in the news and what's up next. But right before it happens, they have a huge mass shooting from a military type. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. Very sad. Let's move on. Page two. You ready? Sure. Long COVID update. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, new shocking statistic yeah. came out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Can you give it a read? Yeah. 65 million people suffer from long COVID. Our experts say the vaccines are the best defense. From well, Forbes. Well, that's good. At least they figured out a solution. Easy solution. <laughs> get more vaccines. Yeah, duh. So long COVID is, I think, an excuse for lazy losers who don't know how to work hard or get a job or leave their parents' house. Yeah. So it's like if you can't focus, if you have brain fog, you like staying in bed and ordering Uber Eats, you're, maybe your hormones are a little out of whack. You're an anxious person. You're, yeah. You have like depression type stuff. You yeah. say, hey, why not throw another ailment on top? I yeah. have long COVID. <laughs> Nobody exactly. can check. Exactly. Nobody can check. They can't call me out on it. Because the next generation, they need excuses for why they aren't doing good or where they want to be in life. And mm-hmm. they're never going to have accountability and say, hey, I need to work harder or I need to get a better this or get promoted at work and kill it. Instead, they're just going to make excuses. I have long COVID. I'm gay and I have anxiety. Look at all these pills <laughs> I take. That's the, that's what's coming, right? Exactly. Um, and then also I, I see Pfizer. And we've covered we've covered on the show, too, before how uh, all the trans bisexuals and like mm-hmm. people have long COVID are yeah. reporting, reporting having long COVID at a much higher rate than general population. Mm-hmm. So it's the attention seekers and the yeah. excuse makers. Right? It's when you don't care about slash you're not very good at anything. Exactly. You got long COVID. Easy. It's fucking easy, guys. So I hope that gets uh, sorted out. If you guys think you have long COVID, make sure you get the vaccines. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> you get less long COVID that way. Exactly. And then speaking of vaccines, uh, Pfizer just bought Arena Pharmaceuticals, maker of a drug to treat heart inflammation such as myocarditis and pericarditis. They must be bullish on those two uh, diseases, right? <laughs> Smart. Maybe yeah. they have some inside info. Mm. All right, let's move on to a little bit of a lighter. <laughs> Their complaint box was full, and they go, huh, maybe we should buy a whole we company. Make, we can make more money off this. Yeah. There's a whole other leg to this trade. The hustle continues. Yeah, there's a whole other leg up. Whoa, I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to something more lighthearted. Okay. Uh, Lil Wayne Wax Museum. Not mass shootings and fucking long COVID and the Twink military. (laughs) That's something a little bit. Israel Hamas. Something a little bit easier to digest. Okay. The, what's it, the Wax Museum. Yeah, Lil Wayne had a wax figurine uh, created by the Wax Museum, and he goes, sorry, Wax Museum, but that shit ain't me. You tried, though, and I appreciate the effort. Buddy. 
That's literally you. That's so much you. I thought that was a photo of you. Yeah, maybe a little light skinned for for you, but you know, uh, and that's the funny part is like, if you do a wax figurine of some guy who's just named Michael and he's got no tattoos, nothing like no marks, it's like, all right, we got to get his face perfect. Lil Wayne's got the dreads, the necklaces, the grill, every tattoo. It's like, all right, we know it's you, dude. You, they nailed it. Yeah. Don't be sad. The Rock, not so much. The Rock has some complaints. They're he working looks, on The Rock. He's like the British Rock or something. Yeah, that is a good point. He's a little British. So not getting as much sun. So pipe down, Lil Wayne. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Are you wasp, wasp and maxing anon? Yeah, um, it, I think it's a. We're coming up on wasp season. You should be dressing like a wasp. Um, the the goal is Connecticut casual. I would say. I like that. Oxford collar button downs, a sweater over it, layering, polos, khakis, no yeah. no pleated shit, nothing pleated. Look presentable, look nice, like you're on an Ivy League campus in 1968. Hey. I like this idea. I know, and I'm not even dressed for it right now, but I think I'm going to I'm going to place an order after this episode. We're Dartmouth guys. Yeah, and I'm going to start wasp maxing again. I used to order a, a buck brown pair of Sperry's. Every year, basically, like yeah. clockwork. And then you blow them out and get a new one. You blow them out in a frat basement. That's good American shit that they want us to forfeit. Exactly. They want that to be part of our past, the white the white supremacy, the white culture, whatever, that we have to just like give up and say is not good. So, And remember when we were talking about the episode uh, a while back, like you got to go where you're wanted. Golf, college football, these are right-wing things. Ivy League aesthetic, right-wing. Yeah. Inherently right wing, especially the Chad version of the Ivy League. Ivy League obviously is like a Muppet lost uh, group of colleges for now, now. For, for now, from all like the stupid shit. Mm-hmm. But there is like a, a Chad about that. There's a Chad mm-hmm. aspect to the Ivy League that we represent exactly. And if you have a square jaw and you're wasp maxing, you're pretty much unstoppable in America. So that's what they fear. That's our free tip for for fall. All right, last part of this page: uh, the capitalism chicken sandwich section. Yeah, um, basically this – well, this was inspired by a conversation that we had um, where we were – we went to the gym and we started drinking protein shakes afterwards. And And I found a protein shake that I swear to you if it was – if it was a little – if it was frozen, I would order it at a restaurant and think I was drinking a milkshake and I would – Take the bad calories. And so we, we, we kind of put it in with this meme, capitalism breeds innovation, and then capitalism, and it's every single restaurant has a great chicken sandwich. And yeah. somehow that's a complaint of these socialist long COVID types. Mm-hmm. Only a long COVID type would complain about this many chicken sandwiches, right? 100%. So we wanted to talk about, I guess, our, our, our appreciation for capitalism. This is the uh, Fair Life Elite Vanilla Protein, mm-hmm. and it's a fucking vanilla milkshake with yeah. 85% of your daily protein. Yeah, 42 grams of protein, 200 and something calories. It's obviously not an ad. They probably hate yeah. us. Oh, they probably – no, actually, Fairlife, Fair uh, they might be in Indiana. They might be – Good. They might be based. Thank but, you, uh, uh, Exactly. Um, but so – It tastes so good. We used to – and this might go past somebody who doesn't have any protein shake experience or if you're Gen Z or something. But if you guys were around in 2010, 2009, 11, that, that sort of region, we used to drink muscle milks. That, that were like bad. Tasted like absolute dog shit. You'd almost need to puke afterwards. Or the watered down whey protein that was like chocolate flavored, but tastes like water chocolate. Generation one water chocolate. Yeah. So we just got to appreciate capitalism when it does give us those massive dubs. Protein shakes are fucking amazing now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also like remember those flat screen TVs from 1999? Yeah. That were like six thousand dollars and they were forty two inches. Now we've. They're handing out TVs yeah, now. We solved that. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you can't get too down, can't get too depressed because capitalism, you know, they gouge you. They gouge you. Inflation, money printing, that sort of stuff. That's a different thing. That's not really capitalism. Yeah. But different companies competing to create a great product. Mm-hmm. Man, protein shakes over the last 10 years, straight line straight up. Straight line up. So. And also to revisit the original meme of the chicken sandwich, I think – like this guy's the joke is that capitalism's bad because all it does is create this. Yeah, I think there's another leg to capitalism that can happen from a situation like this because I have it written down here. It used to be quality ingredients, quality service, and then you compete, and then like the fries are cooked in like tallow. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Then it was cheaper ingredients than the competition, cheaper price in the competition. Fries are cooked in like bad oil. Mm-hmm. Now it's like the cheapest, lowest quality ingredients legally allowed. Yeah. Chemicals in the food, cheap, cheap, cheap shit, estrogen bombs. Yeah. 
So everyone, and then it's like all these chicken sandwiches are basically the same. It's like the cheapest legally we can have that tastes pretty good, full of chemicals. It's all the cheapest shit. It, the market could evolve because people want to go back to higher quality ingredients, I think. Mm -hmm. So that everyone is, everyone's you serving. You have to know they're they're cooking you with these yeah. low cost ingredients. So, so if enough people who can pick from any of these chicken sandwiches say, ooh, I actually want one that's not cooked in seed oils or doesn't have these certain types of chemicals, the market could change to higher quality with a slightly higher price to target that percentage of the audience. I agree. I think that can happen. I, I hope that's that where happens. things are going. Because right now, everything is as cheap as possible and as full as many chemicals as possible. So I think we can get from there to something a little bit better and kind of bring the pendulum back. Yeah. And then here are the chicken sandwiches under socialism. Yeah. None. There's no chickens. Uh, you're eating bugs. You got to eat bugs and you got to go to the zoo. Yeah, you, you get whatever animals at the zoo. You and a group of your friends, they spear it. <laughs> you don't yeah. even have a gun. So uh, enjoy rucking the, the corpse of that zoo animal out and yeah. cooking it for the next month. Some good stuff, though. Could yeah. be interesting. Could be zebra. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bud Light's trying to slink back in. Yeah. Bud Light, which, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of, I might be switching, not switching my position, but I can feel for Bud Light. Basically, Bud Light signed a partnership with UFC uh, to be their sponsor starting, at, I think, in 2024. Um, as they try to fight off the Dylan Mulvaney backlash. So it's like a $100 million deal. Oh, oh we don't know. Over it's 100 over million. $100 million. Over a $100 yeah. million dollar deal. Uh, and basically the way I see it is Bud Light got canceled. How do you fix that? You pay huge money to a company that has your same audience basically, but then that audience won't cancel the company for the association. Yeah. So UFC has the same audience as Bud Light. People aren't going to cancel UFC. And there's going to be like a media parlay here. Like in this article, it says UFC faces boycott calls after announcing they team up with Bud Light. Yeah. That's not even true. I'm, I'm not I, even close I to boycott. Heard, I haven't heard one boycott of Bud Light, but they're going to say that or of now. UFC. Of, of UFC. But they're going to say that now. So when UFC has the best numbers ever, they're going to go, oh, Bud Light's back. The UFC didn't get canceled. They weren't able to cancel them. Yeah. So that's kind of how they're using it to slink back. Bud Light employs tens of thousands of people. 65,000 Americans. 65,000 people, tons of veterans. They pay a ton of money to farmers for they, all the ingredients. They, and this is Dana White's argument that yep. he's kind of making to justify this. He goes, they spend over $700 million a year with U.S. farmers buying their crops for their product. Uh, and there's many other reasons I did this, White told Sean Hannity. So I'm. this is not me saying this is why I like Bud Light. I'm saying this is why Bud Light's an American company who made a mistake. Mm -hmm. What they should have done when the Dylan Mulvaney thing came out was say, hey, that campaign wasn't approved. The people who did the campaign are fired. Here's $10 million to veterans. They still haven't appropriately apologized yeah. for their twink mania. Yeah. Not military-induced this time, but they fell into a marketing woman Girl boss induced twink mania. Exactly. And they didn't make the correction because they didn't want to offend literally Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. And so, exactly. And so, dude, you hear these numbers 65,000 employees, $700 million uh, to US farmers. You should do the right thing, mm -hmm. Bud Light. And you should have done it sooner. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm a little more sympathetic now. It's like we've you've you've paid your dues or almost. I'm never I'm never drinking a Bud Light again until they yeah. do something crazy, 50k direct deposit to my account type yeah, shit. Me too. So or the, all proceeds go to veterans. So for Bud the whole Light, week. Bud Light, if you're listening, sponsor this podcast. You're gonna get ridiculously upcharged. We're gonna take heat from the fans anyway. And we're barely going to vouch for you. <laughs> we'll barely. We'll drink Bud Light. Yeah. We'll say it. Bud Light's great. Bud Light's great. You got that wonky eye. But, <laughs> Bud Light, I love, love but, Bud Light. But so, you know, I'm, I'm a little more sympathetic with this Dana White shit, but like you guys really need to do the right thing and you still haven't even come close. Yeah. You need to make an example of that woman. Remember the woman said, we're trying to get into a new audience, like the LGBTs, yeah, inclusivity. Away from fratty. And we're trying to get away from the frattiness of the beer. Like, that was the stupidest thing anyone could say. You're fired for that. Hey, everyone, that lady's fired. Dylan Mulvaney, that shit is canceled. The, those beer cans were destroyed. Yeah. Like, you got to kind of come out and really be offensive. And they didn't do that. And look what happened. Yeah. TJ Maxx is actually trying to avoid a similar fate. Uh, they had some weird books uh, for sale that were... 
borderline like weird consent book. It was called Yes, No, A Guide to Your Child's Conversation, First Conversation About Consent. And it's yeah. like, don't touch me, strangers. That's basically yeah. the first conversation. Here's your no-no zone. But yeah. there was like a corporate email that went out that was like, delete, get rid of all these books, destroy them off the shelves. We find, don't want to get canceled. Find, remove, and destroy these books. So uh, companies are on the offensive for social justice products targeted at kids. They don't want a fucking backlash. They don't want the fight. They don't want these hands, mm -hmm. you know? And that's smart. I actually like TJ Maxx. Me too. Especially if they're taking that approach where they're trying to like get it off the shelves ASAP. They didn't kind of realize the mess up they did. Yeah, some rogue uh, woman procurement buyer yeah. got these books and they go, what the fuck? In their yep. check and please search so, and destroy. They're taking the loss on whatever they paid for them and getting them into dumpsters near you. Exactly. So that's way better. TJ Maxx greater than Target. All right, moving on. Use this opportunity to tickle this post. Help us juice the algo. Like the video, leave a comment, leave a comment again, and then leave a comment about whatever you want to actually talk about. Yeah, you got to put in your dues. Two comments first and then get to your point. <laughs> um, and then make sure notifications are on as well. And share this with a friend. Watch out multiple devices, all that good stuff. Yeah. All right, it's snowplow naming season. We're going to go quick through this last I'm giving page. it up. I'm, I'm done with these we, namings. We need one name to hit. I think we can do it. We have a Kansas City snowplow and a Nebraska snowplow naming contest. It's linked in the description. Snarf, snarf the snowplow. Sno snarf, snarf, snowplow? Yeah. That sure. sounds pretty good. Snarf, snarf. Yeah. Uh, and let's get one. Yeah. And then when we do, it'll be written on the side of the thing. We'll get a picture of it. We'll put it on the wall, and we'll never name anything again. Yeah. All right, we have. Some I'm ready to be done with this chapter. Yeah, because we we cannot take a we can't get a dub. Yeah, and we're gonna go quick through this next part. It is Friday, so we have doppels and shout outs. Okay, what do you, what are we? Let's doing go first? doppels first. It's only rap boy doppels this week. Okay, this YouTuber John Hammond. That's you. You're John Hammond. Yeah, that's that's a me type for sure. John Hammond's a different guy too. Nice thumbnails. Oh, that's John Ham. That's John Ham. Yeah. So John Hammond, that's you. Free Thanks. cybersecurity education and ethical hacking. Thank you, John Hammond. Thank you, John. If I see you out there, you know. Yep. If shake I my ever hand. need a new co-host. Here's my uh, RRB type working on cars. Speed shop in Azusa, California. This is a there he is. Cadillac convertible. All right. My guy. You guys, you working on some cars? Working on some cars with a long beard. All right. Guess I shouldn't grow out a long beard based on this doppelganger. Good to know. And then here's where it gets dark. Yeah, trans RRB. That really is the closest to you. Yeah, that hurts. So, not good. Well, you know, I'm versatile. I can go, I can be in the box with Taylor Swift. I can work on cars. I can do ethical hacking. And I can be a twink if I really wanted to. Yeah. That's so, the, that's all doors are open to me. <laughs> yeah, that's great opportunity. Yeah. Um, all right. We have some shout outs. We have um, a person who named their baby Snarf Snarf. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a real name. He wrote it on the piece of paper. So that means it's really on the birth certificate as well. And we got the show playing in the background. Lovely. We also have this baby watching the show. Doing a full 180 turnaround to watch the action. Thank you, baby. And that goes that proves our theory that babies are highly engaged with the show for an unknown reason. Yeah. They hear it and they kind of they go. Yep. And then we have uh, DRT Arts made us some cool show art. Thank you. That's the uh, Hamas pretty, Israel version. Yeah, of us. looking pretty Jewish, I'd say here. Or something. I mean, I look like a, a Muslim guy. Yeah, you're a Middle Eastern type. You could easily be Bosnia Herzegovina type <laughs> type of motherfucker. All right, that's good. We have some birthdays too. We're gonna go quick through wait, this. Wait, 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 wait. Are we doing the snarf snarf? What's the snarf snarf? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So there was a snarf snarf update. Art Jam Savitsky. Yeah, this guy, basically a, a low level or lesser known. Estonian singer and audio technician. Somebody saw his Wikipedia was undefended <laughs> and uh, decided to make a Snarf Snarf edit. So they typed, in 2014, he was hired by Snarf Snarf O'Banion as his private audio technician for SSOB's upcoming album, Dubious Snarfs. This album is not set to release until the end of 2023 and is said to contain 200 songs that have been previously written by Snarf Snarf O'Banion in prison. Snarf Snarf was released from prison in 2013 and will be reappearing on social media by the end of 2024. So, so that's good lore. You deserve the shout out if you do something out in the wild like yeah. that. So thank that's you. That's good stuff. We got some birthday shout outs. We're going to go fast because people are getting tired of the shout outs. I, I agree. Me too. Well, we're reaching a critical mass, right? Where mm -hmm. people understood that we started doing birthday shout outs and then now I get like way more DMs asking for birthday shout outs. Hey, everyone's got a birthday and everyone's got a birthday every year. So it's going to be hard. We can't really do it almost anymore. If you're a bonus lander, 
you get way more priority on shout outs. Yeah, pretty much. I'll tell you that. So if you have shout outs, send me a screenshot of Bonus Land subscription on fleckastalks.com and you will get very much prioritized to the front because right now we have so many that I, I'm missing them and I feel bad. Yeah. And Instagram DMs is the best place to to, to send them or Austin at fleckastalks.com or fleckus at fleckastalks.com. <laughs> All right, Lee, 63rd birthday was on the 24th. Happy birthday to Lee. Uh, Mickey from Bonusland, his birthday is on Sunday. Happy birthday, Mickey. Ty Fallon just turned 24. Nick Higgins, amazing wife, her birthday is next week. Uh, James Spider Webb, his birthday is on the 29th. Uh, Bo, his 40th birthday was this week. Shay, happy birthday to you. Adam, his birthday was yesterday out of Northwest Ohio. Happy birthday, Adam. Chelsea, her birthday is today. Thank you, Zane, for letting me know. And Seth Ferrari and his wife, their anniversary is coming up, and they are bonus land watchers. They watch every show, and they watch thank multiple you. devices. So thank you to you guys. We got a letter from a lovely old couple. Who watches the show? Who watches the show. Sent to the P.O. Box. We're sent to the P.O. Box. We're so happy to have young, sensible guys have a show. We love watching it. And they're like, (laughs) for housekeeping, please stop doing doppelgangers and shout outs. Just do the housekeeping. And then they gave us 20 bucks. So we might take your advice. That might be the last one. Unless people start joining Buenos Land. They gave us 20 bucks? They gave us 20 bucks in cash. Really? I didn't see that. Yeah. Where's that at (laughs) now? (laughs) It's gone. (laughs) All right, uh, moving on. Last part of housekeeping, Sandwich of Fall suggestions. We got some new suggestions for Sandwich of Fall. We got the meatball sub. That actually looks good. That's a dark horse. That came out of nowhere. That could be it. On garlic. On so, garlic bread. Go ahead. Keep going. And then we got this open-faced beef sa- hot beef sandwich. Country bread, mashed potatoes, roast beef, smothered in gravy. That's not bad. The Croc Monsieur. Yep. Uh, another one. And then... Monte Cristo. That's it. And there's the Sandwich Police. Yeah. So, hey, we're getting close. Keep sending your suggestions, and we're going to pick the Sandwich of Fall next week. Well, Final decision next week. I know we keep putting it off. Final decision next week, all right? Get your suggestions in. Also, like we mentioned before, make sure you guys send us stuff to the P.O. Box. If you want to send us stuff, letters, gifts, make sure you send two so me and Richard yeah. Repway can both have one. Shout out to Chase Aldridge. For sending us those silver coins, the Trump oh, yeah. silver coins. Those are funny. We're getting bouillon silver. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's great. Uh, and that's the end of housekeeping. We're moving on to Cringe of the Week. But before we get there, make sure you guys are joining FleckusTalks.com for Bonus Land. A lot of you did last week, and we appreciate it. We Thank have you. four hours of exclusive content each month, 30-minute Bonus Land after every episode. If you're on the fence, please do it. it my dad made a good point. He's talking to me about Bonus Land. He said... People spend so much money on coffee or pizza or whatever for five, basically five dollars a month. Yeah, basically. For basically five dollars a month, you're hanging out with us for four hours a month. Extra. It's easy, it's easy it's decision. Like, it's like, would you guys meet us for coffee for four hours and pay more than five dollars? Yeah. Some maybe. of you. Some of you might. So maybe start doing that. Yeah. Fleckustalks.com is a website. Please join. It's linked in the description. All right. Cringe of the week. All right, let's go. First clip, that sewage pipe blowout. Yeah, I guess this is something to be on the lookout for. Yeah. This was in Russia. So you can tell it's going to happen because the guy sitting by the computer, he touches the back of his head, and that's his future self trying to warn him, like, hey, something's about to, something's about to hit here. Okay. Good schizo. <laughs> and turns out he was right. Because here comes the broken sewage pipe. Boom. Raw, unfiltered sewage all over you, right on the bench. Mm, Dark. Enjoy it. Yeah. So I guess something to look out for. That can always happen to anyone. And if you feel yourself going like this, like, "Mm, what's up with that? Or like, my my leg, something's up. Someone might fall on the back of your knee or something. Like, you got to let your future self talk to you and warn you about things. You got to be open to those signals that your future self is trying to give. I agree with that, actually. Normally, I have to balance (laughs) you out, but I agree with that. That's that movie, too, with McConaughey, where he's like, no, don't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kind of hear it faintly. And you're like, what is that? Interstellar, right? Interstellar. Yeah. I'm not making this stuff up. And you hear that muffled, no, don't go. Don't go. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Dove's got some new pigs. Yeah, Dove, Dove actually has a whole lineup of pigs. You want to play pig number one, Commander, first? Yeah. Dove's got a whole stable of these pigs. Partnering with Dove to talk about underarm stigma. Even though I haven't shaved my armpits in 10 years, I sometimes still get self-conscious showing my underarms. 
When I'm feeling the urge to shrink myself and hide parts of my body, I stretch my arms out wide and remind myself to be free in my body. Dove is reminding us all to stretch our arms out and live life to the fullest with their latest Subway campaign. Did you know that 50% of people say that they've judged themselves because of their underarms? Next time you catch those thoughts creeping in, just stretch out your arms and remember that underarm stigmas are just that, stigmas, and not a reflection of who you are. Comment below if you've ever felt any shame or stigma over your underarms. So she lifts her arms up and then the fat rolls cover the underarm hair. You can't even see it. Dove didn't even pick a good person. They needed to like screen her, say like, oh, can you show your underarms in the social media clip we're paying you $3,000 to do? Oh no, you can't. Your fat folds won't even show it. Grab your fat fold, hold it, and then apply the deodorant. The 350 pound woman is self-conscious about her armpits. That's where we're at in life, guys. Mm. She completely overlooks the 350 pound and morbid obesity, Mm -hmm, mm pre-diabetes, and she goes, hmm, my armpits might be a stigma. My urge to shrink myself. Yeah. You don't have that yeah. urge is not strong. <laughs> it's not that much of an urge. It's not a it's not a main driving force for you. I get an urge to shrink myself. I'll start working out more and doing yeah. like deadlifts and stuff. Yeah. This urge to shrink yourself is a little different. And then also the engagement based on the victimhood at the end, where it's like if you ever felt insecure about something, comment below. And you get all the pigs churning in the comments. Oh, yeah. What do you want me to buy, Dove? What am I supposed to buy? And then if you go look at Dove's website, it, they're, the Bud Light marketing lady must work there now because it's she's got a whole stable of pigs. <laughs> yeah. This uh, black woman who wrongly accused some white girl, I think, at the University of Virginia of a racist comment and basically ruined her life and made her uh, have to defend herself in the university and maybe gets expelled. They got that pig. Uh, and they got all these non-binary types, uh, weird ethnic types. So I guess if you're a fat fuck, Dove might break you off a couple G's. So yeah, makes me want to teach Dove a lesson. Makes me want to teach Dove a lesson too. But you know, I don't even know what they're trying to sell over at their headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. Clear um, joke. All right, let's move on. Physical therapy Muppet. Yeah, this is. Well, she's next on the Dove lineup. Yeah, she's a Dove type. I'm tired. Seven in the morning at the physical therapy office, misgendered by someone who I've told my pronouns to. And I said, just to let you know, my pronouns are they, them. And they went, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's right. And then I had to explain um, too many times to my physical therapist that I didn't want to do an exercise where I had to crunch my face into my boobs because that gave me, gives me gender dysphoria. Yeah, 7 a.m., so early. I had such a hard day. Think about it from the other guy's perspective, the perspective of the physical therapist. 7 a.m., first patient of the day. This pig comes in. I told her what to do, and she didn't want to do it because her boobs reminded her she's a girl. I don't fucking know, man. She said I'm they, them. I remember she told me once briefly before, but you know how it is. It's 7 in the morning. I can't fucking. I didn't even have my coffee yet. Yeah, It's like physical therapy is like you're there to fix a physical problem. Like you have something that needs attention. A clear ailment that and needs. Yeah. Uh, physical therapy is expensive. You have a, ma- a major injury if you're going there, right? Yeah, and it's like here's the exercises to fix your ailment and they go oh, i'm not doing that because my fifis in here i think i'm something different it's like my, all right well, yeah well you're not uh, insurance isn't going to be happy about this yeah my fat they them feelings are going to be hurt if i do this well your back's gonna hurt if you don't do the sit-ups yeah. but the dumb mental shit that they have on the totem pole supersedes is, it supersedes physical yeah of course that's the hierarchy it's like uh it's it's a reverse pyramid or something. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the girl who doesn't want to work her nine to five. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table. Like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it w- it'd be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here, like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 615 earliest. And then like I don't have time to do anything. I don't I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like I don't have energy to work out like that's out the window. Like 
I'm so upset. Oh my god. Nothing to do with my job at all, but just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy. Being in the office nine to five, like if it was remote, you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine. But like I'm not home. It takes me long to get home and like like people that drive to the office, like it doesn't you don't get off at five. And I know it could be worse. I know I could be working longer, but like I literally get off it's pitch black like I don't have energy how do you have friends like how do you have time to like meet like we get I think she's got long COVID yeah (laughs) easy excuse to get out of it and she's like kind of complaining it's like oh college didn't prepare you for the real world you you know how to make synchronized outfits with your friends for game day tailgates is the real that's not what the real world is you know Uh, how to do a ski shot where all four of your friends go and they do a shot at the same time with a ski is that not helping you at work (laughs) that's not real life ah shit and i mean (laughs) jokes aside this video went super viral right um and i agree with her yeah. Sometimes you're not built to be a nine to five with a shitty commute. That sucks. And that's you should, the grind. That's the grind. And you should be doing everything you can to not do that. And you should be trying to do to have a boyfriend and create a family and do motherhood because that way 100% of your work efforts go right back into your family. And it's a great, nice circle. Yeah, you make the house look cute. You learn how to do recipes. You work out. You that's actually care. the college skills she learned are actually like that. Little yeah. recipes, little <laughs> outfits, <laughs> little cute. decorations. You well, know? she seems to be more of like the order things on Amazon and Uber Eats type. Hey, that's everybody these days, to be honest. But it's like if you, hey, if you can make yourself, well, it's almost like not too late for her, but so you want to be a housewife, it's like you have to have like, you have to be high integrity. Yeah. And then be someone that someone wants to marry who's going to be like, all right, I'll marry you. You're so great that I'm willing to let you stay at home and you don't have to work and I'll handle everything and my life will be tough. I'll do the commute. You stay here with everyone else, the kids, and you keep the house cute. Yeah. It's a little bit there. There is a there's a lane there, but you have to have that integrity because if you don't, then you're just some stupid girl. And why would anyone give you that? Yeah, you don't deserve it. No, but I mean, broadly speaking, people. A lot of people were looking to bully and dunk on this girl, and it's like, yeah, sure, it's a wake up call. Life's hard, you know. The people are getting smoked. You know, maybe you should say, let's not import a, a three million third worlders. Let's mm. kind of keep wages high. Let's keep rents in these cities that you want to work in low. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe don't subsidize asylum seekers who are going to be competing for the same apartments you want. That are assault walk- you on the train. That are walking distance from your job and will assault you on the train. So, you know, I mean, I'd be, I'd, I'm way more sympathetic to someone who has some right wing values and doesn't want to see inflation continue to soar and all that. So, but it's a tough situation. Nobody wants to fucking leave their house when it's dark and come back when it's dark. That's life in the big city. So yeah, that's I, tough. I get it. I just hope. And th- I mean, this is why we always preach, like, if you are working a nine to five guy or girl, you need to have some sort of other hobby, side hustle thing you're working towards. You know, being independent is the ultimate goal. You don't want to be on the teat, the corporate teat for a while, unless you're a rising star. Yeah. You know what I mean? Working that middling corporate job for a really long time is not the way to gain wealth or happiness. It's a means to an end, right? Yeah. So, I mean, hey, head on a swivel. And good on her for realizing she's not happy in her situation and going to – you got to make a change, right? Long yeah. term. And that is the generation of, like, instant gratification. And they see their friends, like, going to Belize or – Oh, yeah, Abiva. Yeah, you have jobs. Rob's in Abiva again. Oh, <laughs> now he's in Barcelona. <laughs> and they and they're, all their friends have, like, work-at-home jobs and they don't. And they get jealous. And then, like, anything that they're doing that is challenging is because, like, the system needs to change. It's kind of that. And people are just lazy. Like, look at this next clip of this IHOP worker. This lady's sleeping on the job. All we were trying to do was eat breakfast. Falling asleep at the on her job. Yeah, I don't think it's because she's tired. <laughs> Just kidding. I know she's on drugs. I thought you were gonna say. I thought. I thought you were gonna say this is a hard worker. Now this is someone who grinds. Look at how. Look at how late she stays at the table, yeah. even when the order's not done. She's there waiting. Imagine like the waking up and realizing like, did I write what just they just said down? That's got to be a tough. And you wake up like, how long was I asleep for? This happens to the dealers in those online card rooms. Mm. who deal like in like Lithuania or like some weird country and it's like six in the morning there and they're dealing cards and then you wait for their they, while they wait for your decision they're kind of just like yeah yeah next card <laughs> but like you don't know how much time you were kind of asleep how do you know about that are you I, playing I, online blackjack no every night oh, I saw a video <laughs> uh, I saw a TikTok 
<laughs> All right, let's move on. Last piece of cringe. The woman who says black people invented everything. Really quick before we get there, this woman uh, has a tattoo that we need to show. Okay. She got a Mercedes tattooed to her chest. In her defense, her name might be Mercedes. Oh, okay. So okay. then it would be more. But it looks like she got a C-class Mercedes tattooed to her chest. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's listen and learn. Everyone be quiet. A black woman speaking. Shh. Shh. <laughs> Everyone shut the fuck up. Might come with the best intentions. They also get caught in the trap. So the brain drain, Africa really needs the brains. Uh, we are the most intelligent race on the face of the planet. We invented almost everything that made uh, this society and every society on the face of the planet uh, in human. And I, when I mean human, I mean as in toilets, sanitary, everything comes from Africa. The chair, the traffic light, the car. The computer, what is it we haven't created? But our brains are going across. There are more, I think, doctors uh, from Nigeria. Yes, yeah, so we get the point. Yeah. So I think that's what's going on in Europe right now. It's the it's the African brain drain where they're grabbing all of those migrants from Europe, all I mean, all from Africa. Yeah. Uh, who cross those. on the boat? They cross the Mediterranean on yeah. boats, and, and then, then they, those um, are the doctors of, and those are the people who build Europe up. Yeah, and that's why Europe had anything good to show for it was because of all those migrants that came from Africa. It's a brain drain. Duh. The computer. They invented the computer. The most intelligent race. Not intelligent enough to look up the stats on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? It's so funny because it's like you, even it. oh, the Africa brain drain. It's like nowhere in Africa is that great. And every single good city in Africa has European influences and mm -hmm. like built buildings like to European and American specs, you know? Yeah. So it's just like the proof could be hitting you right in the face and uh, – the delusion. I wish to be as delusional as this woman one day. I, I think she's probably on Twitter and she follows one account and it's Tariq Nasheed. Mm. You know, so she's in a little bit of it's it's like worse than an echo chamber. Yeah, it's like a misinformation chamber or something. Yeah, it's even worse. It's a misinformation uh, vacuum. Delusion vacuum. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But hey, let her let her think it. She's not hurting anybody. Hey, we and was, someone gave her a microphone and a, a video. They, yeah. they rolled tape. We was builders of the West. Yeah, everything yeah. good that we have came from Africa. Even though Africa sucks right now. Yep. All right. Don't get too down. Don't get too depressed. We have Urban Decay, which will depress and down you. Eh. We make it fun. Yeah. Let's get right to it. Kids. The, remember those kids from a couple weeks ago? Kids. Remember those young adults from a couple weeks ago who ran over the guy on the bike and yeah. were laughing about it? Yeah. The criminal murderers from a couple weeks ago. The criminal murderers from a couple weeks ago. They ran over the cop and killed him and were laughing with a stolen car. Well, they're laughing again in court. Here they are. Here's them in court like it's two kids disrupting a fourth grade classroom. Yeah, like it's the principal's office. What did you see them doing? Um, they were flipping us off. They, um, I would say about three or four different times. They flipped us off, flipping each other off, joking around with each other. Definitely not taking anything serious whatsoever. You see this guy's you see this guy's face tattoo too? North Carolina Tar Heels logo. That's what you wanted. The Texas logo yeah. tattoo. I'm a Duke guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so these kids, I mean, it's a good opportunity to reiterate our point. 65 years of hard labor we can yeah. get out of these fucking scrubs. We can they kill the guy. Ditches. Digging ditches forever. Yeah. And you know what? They go out with a, in a little sprinter van with uh, eight other guys and then one guy who's got a gun and a nice cowboy hat and who's stronger than all of them and he keeps them in line. And they maybe, train them up. Maybe with the chains, maybe with a whip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's get these guys picking up trash, digging ditches, uh, hot, hot. Pay, so, yeah. pay them a penny an hour just so that nobody can make the argument that it's slave labor or something. Smart, smart. Get them outdoors. Get them working. So, In I mean, heat. Yeah. The, a lot of people say execute these kids. I agree. If it was as easy as just going bang, let's execute them. But there's the whole legal process. There's the whole this. I think it's easier to get life sentence prisoner types to just work for mm -hmm. basically free for America than it is to fight the whole, oh, the Innocence Project, oh, the appeals, oh, the death row, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, that, that's an uphill battle. Let's just get them working. I agree. And then there's a lot of situations like this where you find these kids that are just so far gone and they're like so removed from like being normal people in society where like their behavior is just like so uncomprehendable. Well, you can't even relate to how dumb and how impulsive they are. Yeah. You really have no we have no if you're a normal person, you have no way of 
even understanding them. Right? Yeah. And then online I found this thing about uh, the effect of a child who's been neglected by their parents and how their brain develops. Can you read that? I know it's popular on these parts of the internet to be a strong biological determinist, but the more we learn about children and brain development, we realize how important infancy is for the rest of their life. Going to post some images to explain. It goes without saying, but... And this is like a scan of a normal brain versus a brain of a child who's been extremely neglected. Uh, a lot more dark matter and ridges. I don't know. It doesn't look great to me, though. Mm -hmm. I'm no neuroscientist, but yeah. it ain't looking great. Um, and so this it's a whole thread about early brain development for chi ki kids who uh, are neglected versus kids who are like read to, talked to, held, all that stuff. I'm, I'm not going to go into this whole thing, no, right? Yeah, but, you basically said it, but it's like their brain develops so much worse and their impulsive impulse control and their reactivity is like off the charts bad. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when mom's playing on her phone and eating hot chips when you a baby. Yeah, there's no dad. Mom's got some shit going on and, you know, hey, keep it down. It's, it's mm -hmm. basically only to yell at you. So uh, some people shouldn't have kids. And when they do and they turn out to be monsters like this, the state just got, gained an angel, a.k.a. A manual labor worker for the next 60 years yeah. is what, I, in a dream world, that's what these guys should be doing. They can't be released back into society. But in, in the world we live in, these guys are the real victims because they are going to be a, just another number, just another black or brown person who's arrested and it's disproportionately affecting those communities. You know, yeah. that's like the attitude. And yeah. that's what our next story is They couldn't is about. help it, right? They could, you know, they couldn't help it. Oh, the, the, the state just wants to arrest black, uh, black and brown people. Well, then we have this article. The ACLU is uh, defending prostitutes. Check this out. Breaking. We're suing Tennessee for their aggravated prostitution statute that targets people with HIV with harsh punishment and lifetime sex offender registration. This law is unconstitutional and disproportionately affects black and transgender women. Yeah, and then it said the law elevates engaging in sex work from a misdemeanor to felony based on someone's HIV status, a protected disability. So the ACLU is defending prostitutes who have AIDS because it disproportionately affects black and trans women. I'm so sick of seeing the word disproportionately affects combined with some other immutable characteristic that has nothing to do with the other characteristics, yeah. right? They didn't, yeah, they didn't say black people who probably have AIDS and we're going to round them up and find out. They're talking about literal people who are HIV positive only, and if so many of them are black and trans, then that's just the world. Yeah. I can't help you guys. Oh, disproportionately affects this. And then, you know, black people in America are such a protected class and, you know, the tip of the social justice spear, and it's like, do they have AIDS or fucking yeah. not? Yeah, it's sex workers with AIDS. That's the distinction. Yeah. AIDS or no? Disproportionate. Yes? Okay. I don't care. I'm not even looking. AIDS or no? Yeah. Just tell me. AIDS or no? And yeah. uh, of course, it doesn't matter. The ACLU will spend thousands of this, thousands of hard donated dollars from leftists to defend Tennessee HIV positive people's right to sell their body on the street. And give more people AIDS. These people are so stupid. Good spiral. Hey, is it a race to the top or to the bottom? Which way are we trending, ACLU? Yeah. Enjoy your fucking life and jobs. All right, let's keep going. Uh, shoplifting versus stealing. This is a quick clip. I thought it was pretty funny. I can't tell if this is a skit or real life anymore, it too. It might be a skit. First of all, okay, I'm going to tell the truth, but I feel like you're just trying to accuse me of stealing. No, broke people steal. I'm shoplifting. And let me tell you why. <laughs> so there's a difference. Broke, broke people, people steal. steal. I'm shoplifted. And it's yeah. a tra so that's, trans woman so, with fake nails. Yeah, so that's just, uh, the difference is I just disrespect corporations. I disrespect Walmart. I'm shoplifting. I'm not stealing. So yeah. That's how they justify it, and uh, I'm not. I'm disproportionately AIDS affected. That there's a disproportionately AIDS affected person <laughs> right there. <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You might get HIV. Uh, that's my right. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the uh, the crackhead who breaks the car windshield wipers. What is this? A crackhead? A normal person? Someone having a mental break? It's someone who black woman calmly walks up to a car at a red light. Someone who's been neglected as a child, probably. I would have I would have ran her over as soon as the first Get swing. The fuck out of the room. Wow, I can't fucking believe you did that to my machine. Oh, I'm camera. That's good. 
I would have ran her over or baby's made, crying in the car. Ran that car door off. Yeah. I would have made her really deal with that. That's tempting. Yeah. That's tempting. Car door backwards. Have fun. But yeah, low trust society shit. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, is the person in front of me driving like, and this person's driving a nice-ish car, like a SUV of some kind mm-hmm. uh, that looks decently maintained. Is the person in front of me having a mental break or not? Is the person in front of me uh, on uh, crack or not? Is the prostitute on that street corner have HIV or not? I don't know. None of it. None of it's your business. Yeah. You just have to deal with what the consequences are when something happens inevitably, like in this case, right? Yeah, exactly. That lady had two babies in the car. But hey, we more we need more context to understand the complexity of the situation. Yeah, we need a social justice worker to come out and talk politely to this woman <laughs> who yeah. just caused eight hundred dollars of damage to a car with two infants in it. Probably for nothing. For nothing. Um, all right, let's go to the. Hey, car. we don't know the context before yeah. the filming started. She may have been racist. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the car wreck robbery. So this happened in L.A. Someone got into a car wreck, right? Off, off the 10. And then they just robbed him. Oh. Minivan comes out. The minivan with four willing participants of robbery goes, hey, this seems like a good opportunity. They stranded. So they get into a crash. Airbags deployed. Real crash. And then the van full of guys comes out. Then they just rob them while everyone's in the worst moment of their life. So that's the state of America. If you're in L.A., you're more likely to come upon a group of four robbers than you are police or tow trucks in a quicker yeah. time frame, you know? Yeah. It's like, are you going to help me or take my shit now that I'm kind of in a tough spot and can't defend myself? And I'm waiting for the day where a police officer pulls up and he robs you. That's when you yeah. know it's really gun time, I think. Yeah. That's kind of like the line. This is just like, okay, we're in, uh, this is like the Raiders in uh, Mad Max world. Mm-hmm. They come up and it's just, it's it's dystopia, but they're just regular guys in hoodies and a minivan. Uh, when the police start doing it, that's when it's true, true gun time. That's interesting. Yeah. There was a mugger, it's, this would be a quick story, but there was a mugger who uh, pummeled a 73-year-old, says, heartless mugger pummeled 73-year-old woman before snatching her handbag on New York City street. Yeah, a heartless mugger, new euphemism, pummeled a 73-year-old, uh, causing her substantial pain and her face and body, uh, stole her purse, and then the suspected assailant, who's on the loose, was described as a woman in her 20s with a dark complexion. It was a dark-skinned white person. Standing about five feet eight. People, they can't even say black. It's a black woman. Yeah. What are you guys doing? You're not allowed um, to say it. And then, yeah, ki- that's it. I mean. But that's it, how it is. That's how it always is. Like, the racism, racism is so much worse than the crime. And that, what's racist? Everything. So it's, you can't describe the perpetrator because it could be insensitive. But it's like, no, 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 no. Someone attacked an old lady. We got to find that person because if there's someone attacking old ladies, that's very dangerous. You can kill an old lady by doing this, you yeah. know, pushing her over on the, and she falls the wrong way. So we really need to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Uh, what's the description? Dark complexion. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, a Mediterranean? Italian? What are we talking about here? Yeah. So, so that's low trust society shit. I got a tweet from someone about a high trust society situation Yeah. from their town. Fleckus, I live in a high trust society. Today is Tuesday. The store closed Friday evening and has not opened back up since because the owner died Saturday. The pumpkins and plants, etc., were outside the whole time and not touched. Funeral was today and they opened back up tomorrow. And this is a piggly wiggly in small town America that's in a high trust society. And no one steals the stuff. So enjoy it, Mary. Enjoy it. Hopefully, and you know, Mary, enjoy it and any chance you can to fight. Any dumping of migrants or Somali types? Anybody? You, you got to fight that as much as you can Any to keep that. Third worlders. Keep the high, keep the trust high. And last clip of Urban Decay: the attempted R A P E. Can't say that word for the A L G O. Yeah, the algo doesn't like the R A P E word. <laughs> okay, let's let it rip then. Next thing I know, I feel my dress being lifted up all the way. Um, and I feel him right here on my neck. And next thing I know, he grabs my hips and he thrusts himself into me and, um, I couldn't like break away. So I just turned really quick to kind of break his grip. And, um, and then he pushed me to the, to the ground. And now I'm learning that the DA, um, deems it 
deems it not attempt of rape because he didn't tell me he was going to rape me. Which so the guy comes up behind mean, her, his pants are down. Basically, Cac is out. Cac out, pulls her dress up, pushes her to the ground. Grabs her hips. Yeah, but that's not R-A-P-E because he didn't say, I'm I'm so-and-so, so-and-so, and I'm going to R-A-P-E you now. I, Michael Gonzalez of Sound Body and Mind, am declaring my intent to rape you right now, young lady. So yeah. LADAs just go... Goodbye. Well, he didn't say he was gonna. It's he, on camera. Look at this rat. <laughs> it's on camera. He's got like meth teeth looking away. He's laying on the ground before this. <laughs> yeah. But we need, eh, he didn't say it. Let him back out. Yeah, look at him. He's getting up off the ground as like a homeless street rat because a girl in a dress walks by, gets his cack out. Is that is that his cack out? Yeah, it's a blurred it, yeah. Oh my God, he's ready to rape. So, hey, poor lady, uh, you know, who are you going to vote for next month? Who are you gonna vote for well, next year? Well, Donald Trump. Yeah, Trump's too mean, right? The, 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 this this country would go to shit if Trump got elected. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just got attempted. You got attempted rape, and no DA was gonna do anything about it. I, Michael Gonzalez, street rat of sound body and mind, <laughs> declare my intent to rape this young lady. And even then, they probably would drop the charges after a couple preliminary hearings. Yeah, there's too many brown people in jail. Yep. All right, that's the end of Urban Decay. Let's move on to Uplifting Gold. Don't get too down, don't get too depressed. We're moving on to Uplifting Gold. All right, our first clip is a blind skateboarder. I haven't seen this clip yet, but I'm assuming it's a anyone can do anything situation. Um, you know, people say blind people shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. Why shouldn't they? Let it rip. Yeah, my guy. All right. There he goes. Nailed it. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! I mean, oh my God! You gotta assume this guy just bought a pair of glasses and a blind guy stick. Oh, you think it's fake? Yeah, I don't think it's fucking real. Oh, good, good. Well, that's All better. Right. All that's right. better. All right. Zero for one on uplifting gold. Zero for one. All right, uh, the lady in the Burger Crown at the baseball game. I think this is a this is a person who the simulation didn't fully load and isn't really paying attention, like an NPC basically, and the game is happening a, an inch away from her. And look at her face. Slow motion catch. The ball missed. She doesn't, she doesn't even, even know flinch. what's going on. Yep. She's just standing right there. Didn't fully load that character. Uh, NPC or 100 milligrams of edibles before the game and a oh, stupid yeah. crown. You know, either one. Either one. Coin flip. Coin, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Let's go on to the guy who's building a shotgun arm thing because his arm, I don't know. He's a person with an entertaining talent. He's a PET. Day 72. Now, the doctor said, if you remember right, Day that I should be able to use my right hand back to normal by Thursday. So I begun working on designing the version for the shotgun arm that will be on my left hand instead. That way I can swing right hand dominant again. Now, it's going to be a little bit bigger and bulkier, sure. But it will have a couple of important features that will hopefully set it much higher and much better than this will. Also, I haven't gotten to fixing it yet because I'm out of truck and chill anyway, so why waste the energy? But with that out of the way, it's just another normal day of swinging. So he's he's preparing to what? Swing a gigantic sword in some mythical Lord of the Rings type scenario? And then he has the shotgun arm brace thing. And it's day 72 of this. Shit. That's pretty good. Hey, at least he's up to something. Hey, that's productive. What's, what's your son doing? Oh, he's in the yard. He's in the yard every day working on stuff. He's swinging again. Better than playing on the computer. Yeah. Um, Better really than pretending you have long COVID and complaining about work. I don't know. Being transgender. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's move on. Trump makes fun of Biden and how he gets off stage. Or find his way off a stage. He can't find his way off a stage. You ever see the makes a speech, if you call it that? Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> and they're screaming at him. They're saying, no, you got there, you got there. <laughs> I mean, he can make a bad speech, but you got to be able to see, you know, you came in here, I can even go out there, I see there's an exit there, exit here, you got exits all over. It's unbelievable. He's riffing on Joe Trump, Biden's yeah. inability. Trump's got it. Yeah, he does. He's very funny. His timing is so good, and his his jokes don't, like, require big words or, 
confusing illusions. It's just like, ah, he does this. <laughs> yeah, there's no big setup. He just knows how to riff, yeah. for sure. All right, last clip of Uplifting Gold, The Little Person Homecoming 2023. Love to see it. So here he is. We got no audio because it's copyright, but here he is rolling up. Uh, him and his parents. He's on stage. He's a finalist. And he eventually wins. Homecoming King. Love that. And Good for him. And these guys like him. He's giving fist bumps. He's taking pictures. He's happy. You see he's happy? Clovis High School. Him and the queen. Him and his mom. Him. Him and his boys. Him and his friends. There he goes. Love to see it. That's Americana. Where's Clovis? That seems like New Mexico type shit. Yeah, maybe. Doesn't matter. Well, that's right. the end of the episode. Another uplifting gold in the books. Another Fleckus Talks in the books. I want to say really quick one thing. Okay. I did a pretty good job reading today. <laughs> I don't really mess up reading anymore now well, that everyone made fun of me for hey, it. Hey, one for one. Good for you. You're starting a, a trend, I guess. You're, you're on track. You guys should have heard him do the ad read from the other room earlier before we shot. He does the ad read first. And so, you know, actually, never mind. I'm not even going to bring you down. I, I Good job reading today, buddy. I threw my pen against the wall. He couldn't read it. He couldn't read the like Undertack ad. I he threw could, my pen against the wall. Yeah. I was mad. Nick, I can, you can show that, Nick. It's, uh, <laughs> no, don't. No, you can. It's, it's just how the sausage is made. Yeah. But, you know, hey, I put a lot of effort in. So do you. We take the show seriously. Um, yes, that is the end of the episode. Make sure you guys join FleckusTalks.com. We have a bonus land dropping right now. Extra 30 minutes. We have really funny clips we're going to get to. And our small business shout-out of the day. It is Friday. Our small business shout-out is Chinese Donut Boy. Chinese Donut Boy just hit 100K. He's my brother, so he's your guys' brother too. And Chinese Donut Boy is selling Donut Boy beanies. Oh, Very cool. The first ordered... step of the uh, yeah. monetization of Donut Boy. He's got 100K. A lot of you guys followed him and helped him get to 100K. And now he's selling Donut Boy beanies. This is what they look like. They're pretty cool. I ordered five, so you're getting one. Thank you, thank you. But I'm proud boy. to be a Donut Boy. Yeah, we're all Donut Boys. So make sure you guys get a uh, follow him on Instagram and get a Donut Boy beanie if that's what you're looking for. Winter is coming. We will see you in bonus land. And then on Tuesday, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. You came in here. I can even go out there. I see there's an exit there. Exit here. You got exits all over. It's unbelievable.